Coach's Corner is brought to you by Capital Investment Company of Virginia. Hello and welcome in to another episode of Coach's Corner. I'm Mitch Stewart and this morning I'm joined by Rail Yard Dogs head coach Dan Rivner. Dan, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Mitch. We talked a little bit about Friday's game prior to Saturday and then Saturday's game kind of ended up turning into a bit of a gong show, almost 40 combined penalties, a real back and forth affair that had that feel of playoff hockey, but you guys roared life in the third period. You're able to get the split in a very tough environment down in Knoxville. What were some of your takeaways overall from the weekend as you get two out of the possible four points? Um, yeah, I think uh, on Saturday, you know, like you said, on Friday, we kind of uh, feel like we played a good game as far as uh, as far as the skill part of the game, as far as creating opportunities, as far as shutting down their opportunities. Um, but one thing that was missing for sure was our intensity and, and kind of our, uh, our compete physicality level on it. And, and we, I think we made the adjustments we needed to in, on uh, going into Saturday. And we made a point to initiate a lot of that contact, initiate a lot of that compete uh, situation, stick on puck and making sure that we were winning those battles and we were winning the physicality of the game. Um, obviously it kind of spiraled out of control a little bit as far as uh, I think the control of the game and, and that's something that we've seen uh, kind of as a common theme throughout this season, particularly when we're playing Knoxville. Um, but, you know, so much credit to our guys. Uh, I thought uh, we were, were on the wrong end of some, some poor, Poor calls through the second, um, where they capitalized. Uh, we continued to battle, uh, and we got some calls in the third that our guys uh, stepped up and capitalized on, and, and just continued to push. And you know, anytime you're going into third down, and you can see a team that rallies and pushes and finds a way through, uh, it's just a testament to their character. So, I was uh, really happy with the way um, the weekend finished, uh, and now it's always about uh, finding consistency in that. I feel like one of the tougher parts of your jobs is. When this time of year rolls around, you want to go out and find new contributors, find new blood, but sometimes that means that you have to make some tough decisions with some guys that are here, and obviously we wish the best of luck to Brady, Dylan, and Tyler, but let's start by looking at some of these new players that have come into town. You have Jason Lavalle, who was most recently in Evansville, got activated from the IR, and then you were able to actually claim him off of waivers from the Thunderbolts. What is your initial scouting report on Jason as he is ready to make his dog's debut this weekend? Uh, good skater, great shooter, um, and, and uh, really, really high compete level. He likes to play physical. He likes to hit hard. Um, and it's kind of his first instinct. You know, when you watch guys out there, you can see guys that are working to have that aggression, and you can see guys that have that aggression just built in. It's their first instinct. So something we're looking for him is, is that physicality and always going to the, uh, uh, to the battle, um, always initiating that kind of contact. Well, Arguably the biggest news I think this week is you're able to get back Garrett Sargis. And of course, anyone that watched your team last year, they know how important he was down the stretch in the regular season and the playoff run as well. What does Sarge kind of bring to the table for you guys as you kind of look to transition into that playoff style mode of hockey? Yeah, again, uh, Sarge is a physical beast. Um, anybody that's uh, spoken to him and, 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 uh, and, and seen him, he's, he's a beast. And uh, he brings that on the ice all the time. Uh, maybe not at the, the aggressive side of going after, uh, after the big hits, but his puck protection and then, you know, that's, that's one facet to it. His, his skill set is, uh, is something that our team's been missing, kind of that creativity side. Um, first couple days on the ice, you saw it. He plays very free. He plays. He plays. He, he loves the game, and you see it in everything he does. He has fun with it. Um, and then the locker room too. You know, I don't think there was one guy that wasn't absolutely pumped to hear that we were getting uh, Sarge back and see him back in the room and, and hear him again. So um, it's a great lift for our team right now. And uh, yeah, as as our fans should know, as our team knows, down the stretch and into playoffs is uh, when a guy like Sarge uh, really has his best uh, best hockey. So. Really, really excited to see him back in our lineup. You had another player from the college ranks. Billy Roche comes into town. He had some time with Suffolk his first four years and was a captain there and then ended up with Curry College this past season. They went all the way to the NCAA mm -hmm. quarterfinals. What are you expecting from him as he makes his pro debut for Roanoke this weekend on the back end? Um, yeah, we're expecting just a good, solid defensive game. Um, looking any anytime we get a, a college D in, in particular, I think D is one of the more obviously a more uh, mature position. It takes time to kind of grow into that position. Um, you know, we're encouraging him to just play good, solid D, make a good first pass, and then feel out the game a little bit. Uh, he's a guy that we got a good reference on, and uh, you know, big body, strong kid. We're going to look for him to uh, kind of step in and, and show us what uh, what he can expand outside of those that that basic uh, building block. 
you spoke about the physicality kind of rising to a different level on Saturday night for your guys, but also when you look down some of the numbers from Saturday night, your offensive leaders, your producers, they stepped up huge for you all in that 7-5 to win. Matt Jansen gets two goals in the game winner. C.J. Stubbs with three points. Billy Vizzo, three assists. Nick Ford yeah. ends up with two points as well. How good was it to see kind of that group start to find some success, especially this late in the regular season where they were all clicking at the same night? Uh, same time. Excuse yeah, me. yeah. No, I mean, um, those are the guys that we expect every night that we're looking on the score sheet to see them factoring in and to get them started on, on Saturday is great. It's got to be there consistently throughout the rest of the stretch. You know, seven of eight at home, um, I'm expecting uh, that push from those guys. And then we're expecting the guys that maybe you aren't aren't always seeing on the score sheet to start getting a little bit more frequent as well. Um, adding the guys that we have, you know, we're looking to add that depth where I think the last month we've had Ford and Stubbs going going pretty good, consistent every night. Uh, you know, we need more. We need we need to be able to uh, attack with three lines. We need to be able to get ozone possession with three lines. We need to have three lines that can contribute on the score sheet. So this weekend, finally home back here to Berglund Center, a big three and three. It starts with Fayetteville on Friday and Saturday night, Knoxville again on Sunday. We've seen Knoxville a lot here recently. We, yeah. We've talked a lot about them here in the past couple of weeks, but kind of shocking that we haven't seen Fayetteville for two back-to-back -back games, yeah. and it feels like a pretty long time. They had a big weekend sweep, a 3-3 three and three over yeah. Pensacola this past weekend. They'll be hungry as they try to lock up their spot for the playoffs down in the eighth seed. What can you expect from Fayetteville as they roll into town first on Friday night? Uh, yeah, I uh, watched their games over the weekend, and, and they're playing good hockey. Um, I don't think they've been playing bad hockey most of the year, actually. You know, you look at... Uh, the way our year went where we were down the stretch we didn't feel like we were a bad team and, and there's things that factor in all the way through the year but um obviously they, they battled hard through the weekend and, and came up with a very convincing uh, three game sweep of a, of a good pensacola team so uh we're expecting them to come in and then they're going to play the same way they have all year um and it's going to be good hockey and, and we know what to expect um it's going to be fun getting back to that you know sometimes uh when you're in the heat of it like we are with knoxville right now it's nice to get uh, fresh teams in it's nice to get a team that we've uh, played so many times in the past and finally get to see them again in, in Fayetteville this weekend. Well, Dan, best of luck to you on this weekend. Thanks, Mitch. That's going to do it for this episode of Coach's Corner. Roanoke is finally back on home ice. It starts Friday night, first responders night against the Fayetteville Marksmen. Saturday night, you need to go and get your tickets now. It should be a packed house for a Top Gun night sponsored by Bugman. Exterminating those specialty jerseys are live for auction after the game benefiting the Kip Nightinger Scholarship Fund. And then it wraps up on Sunday. Bring your dog to the game day here at Berglund Center as Roanoke hosts Knoxville once again. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great rest of your day. Coach's Corner is brought to you by Capital Investment Company of Virginia.